this game makes my brain hurt when I play it, and it hurts so good. Um, I... That's so not cool. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm Jonna. I'm Daniel. And this is a board gaming channel called One Pip Wonder. We recently changed the name, so if you're confused, it's the same channel, right. just a new name. And we decided that we would just bite the bullet and finally do our top 10. We're just like, we're not uh -huh. professional board game reviewers. That's right. We're just like, we have normal jobs. We play board games occasionally, occasionally throughout the week, monthly for sure. And over the last couple of years, we've come to find some favorites. And these are our top 10 favorites as of March 2020. It's so why would you want to watch this? I don't know. Maybe you wouldn't want to watch this. And that's totally fine. I get that. But we find it helpful when we are listening to reviewers to know what games they like the most. Because it helps judge what their review, kind of like right. where they're It helps you where they're them anchored. better. We play a lot of the same games, so it's likely we'll have a lot of the same Hopefully it's not too boring. Yeah. We didn't tell each other our list. It's a surprise. My number 10 is Predator. And oh, this game yeah. might go higher, but I only got to play it one time. And so I almost didn't put it on the list at all because I only got to play it one time. And then putting it on your top 10 is kind of iffy because it's like, well, how can you judge? From but anyways, I digress. It's yeah, about, it's about, about making it a clothing line for fashion shows, right? But it's, it's uh, a lot of... Uh, Economics is a lot of planning for the future. You have to mm -hmm. buy resources that you can't use this turn. You're gonna have to use them later down the road. And so <laughs> that's what I missed. <laughs> yeah, and it's also like it has a worker placement um, um, bit element, to it. Yeah. Element, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's very mean and um, it's like for a Euro game, it's really mean with other players. Like you can't actually you, you can't go and steal someone else's clothing line. That's not mean like that, but like the spaces you need to go to are tight. Cutthroat. It's very cutthroat, yeah. so that's the way to say it. It is. So, and then you're directly competing with other players for um, the fashion the shows. shows. So then uh, yeah. you can't just get points independent of someone else. Like either you're getting the points or someone else is getting the points. So yeah. that was I, very good. I, I still don't agree with you that it's a Euro game. I think it's well, that's so far. To it. Like it's like, it's economic and then Feel, but okay, and I, I think I wouldn't yeah, it I know calling way. things as euro games or non-euro games I guess aren't that helpful anymore, but yeah um, It's like if you were looking hipster. it up if you were looking something up in BGG They would probably call it euro. they might throw that term in there, but, yeah, but I'm not sure that's super helpful All right for euro gamers. I do like games. I sort of lean towards games where The more you get to play it the better you know it the better you can get at it you know, I, those you tend to be the yes. games I like the yes. most, and that, yeah. this game definitely lends to that. Not that I actually get better at these games, but at least I feel like I could get better at these yeah, games. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I totally get why you like Predator Quarter. No. Not my top 10. Alright, so my number 10 is a game called Blood Rage. Blood Rage? <laughs> yeah. And um, it is the, I think it's the only dudes on a map game on my list and I had to put it on there because and do that's do that's yes <laughs> um, I really enjoy the uniqueness of this game it has a different type of board it's about Vikings and their 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 culture and like going to Valhalla and battling and whatnot but it's all very it's almost abstracted it's not like your typical war game where there's one side and you're conquering this land it's not area control in the traditional sense. Mm -hmm. And I love that about it. It just has a very unique feel. Every round, there's three stages. It's three ages. There's three ages. And each one feels, it builds upon the other one, but they feel a little different. You feel like you kind of have a clean slate, almost, every turn, because you're- Every age, every not age. every turn. No, every age, that's what I meant. Um, and part of this is uh, part of the game is drafting cards, which gives you spe special abilities for the the new age. And I think that's why it gives it that clean slate feel. I really like that. I love the feeling of that, like, okay, we're going to try this this time. Or, 
you know, there's different uh, strategies. You can try to win by gaining glory, and that is requires you to die a whole lot, which is interesting. And you can also get monsters for different abilities and just, I don't know, it's just a very unique game. I really love it every time I play. I'm very bad at it, but it's one of those games I don't really care. I, I still enjoy the play of Blood Rage. And it also has excellent minis, really nice artwork. Um, it's just a joy to play, so I had to put it on my top ten. It's so, okay. It's gonna be on your, like, eh, top five, isn't it? My number nine is a game that I know is technically not a good game. I will be, I am the first to admit to it. I don't even bring it out with most people because it's mm. not a good game. But I okay. enjoy playing it so much. I enjoy, this is probably the board game that when I play it, I am role playing as I play it. And it's not a role playing game. And that is Firefly the board game. <gasps> And I enjoyed the show. I'm not like a diehard fan of the show, but I really did enjoy the show and the movie. And I have a couple friends that do, and so I, we will play it with those friends. And so we enjoy the theme first and foremost. I love playing that ship's captain and going yeah. in the world. And I know that technically it's not that great of a game. It's long. There's certain elements of luck to it that maybe shouldn't be there the way it is. But I enjoy this game. I know everyone asks, well, did you play Outer Rim? Well, look, I'm not that, don't murder me now. I, I'm not that into the, that world. You know, Star, Outer space, you Star know, like Wars. Star. Oh, okay. Star Wars, it's like, yeah. you know, it's all my top 10. Yeah. I don't expect everyone out there to agree with me on this pick. This is a- Firefly was my 11, yeah. literally. Oh, okay, so, 11. yeah. It's right up there. I know. <laughs> Top 10 game? Yes. I really enjoy playing it. Okay. Um, so my number nine is not all that different from Firefly. Really? Western Legends. It's a sandbox game. I know you might disagree for whatever reasons. It's not as long. It's not as complex. But a it is a sandbox game, sandbox game yeah. where you can have just a ton of fun and there's... N n there is strategy. Like, you always beat me, so there must be some strategy. I'm missing... <laughs> But it, it's just a load of fun. You're playing as a Western character. They're, I think, are some of them fictitious? I feel like most of them are historical or at least legendary enough that yeah. most people know the characters and you get to select one of these like great Western characters to play through the game. And then you can either be a wanted person or a martial person. And then you get extra bonuses and points for either arresting people or or stealing cattle from people. I don't know, it's just so fun. Especially when we play with our friend Andrew, who is a big movie guy, he loves Westerns, and we get, you know, the the good, the bad, and the ugly soundtrack going. And it's just like one of my favorite games. It's, I, I, I love Firefly as well, but it's just a little lighter and easier to get to the table. You mean Western Legends is lighter? Western Legends is lighter than Firefly. Yeah. So that's why I too. put it on my list. Yeah, yeah, I like Western Legends. It's not on my list, not on my top 10. It would be in my top 20. And it is a, I agree that it's technically a better game than Firefly, yeah. I, uh, as far as pleasing the crowds. Yeah, and yeah. it's, it, you can, it's shorter. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can adjust the length of the game, sort of. Right. I think it's played best at the short or medium length. Mm -hmm. There's a long length yeah. and it, it gets too monotonous at that point. So, yeah. no, I agree, it's a good game. So, yeah. It's a fun game. My number eight is automobiles. And when I did my top 10, I'm like, why is automobiles in my top 10? This is a game I kind of disagree with myself. I'm like, really, <laughs> automobiles is is fun. I enjoy it, but like, I don't know. I, I had a hard time making this list. I had a lot of inner conflict. <laughs> I, I love how you were really tortured making this yeah, list. Yeah, I'm like, man, people are like, why is he putting automobiles in his top 10? But I don't know, I just like it. Like, maybe I shouldn't like it this it much, but I do. It doesn't matter that much. You can make another list next year. Automobiles, <laughs> you're pulling your... It's a bag building game. It's a great game! You're uh, racing around yeah. a track, and like, the the grayscale cubes are always the same on the track, and the colored cubes let you do special abilities. Mm -hmm. And those can change from game to game. Because they give you a bunch of cars to change them out. It's a, it's a fun 
I would say slightly heavy family weight gain, depending on how gamey your family is. But I, I, I teach this, taught this to new players mm -hmm. or players that don't play a lot of games, and they picked it up just yeah. fine. You can adjust how long it is based on how many laps you're going to play. Um, I, it gives you that engine building quality where you're putting cubes in the bag and you know really gonna make the right combination of cubes to do fun stuff but there's some luck in there and of course you know you can gum up your engine if you're burning too hot or something yeah yeah and no. there's not a lot to say about it it's not that complicated of a game and it's not that innovative like it's, it's not to do anything no, revolutionary it it's a, just a good package all-around package it's a fun game and I think if it was a game that you had played this year for the first time you would have had no problem putting it on your list it's because we played it so many times that it feels old and retired to you even though it's a great game yeah we have played right? this a lot like, a lot yeah and I would still readily play it tomorrow I think it's a fine pick um, so my number eight is Century Golem Edition. So this is a game. Um, really, I thought this would be higher on your list. So many games. Yeah, I love this game. It's got awesome components and fantasy yeah. artwork. So those two things, I was absolutely sold on when I first saw it. In addition, you're building these. Um, you're, you're trying to lure these golems to you, and you have to collect certain gem patterns to collect the different golems to get them to come to you. That's the idea behind the game. Um, and the way that you get different gem colors, you start with a cer certain amount, and you all kind of start with base colors. You get the lowest value gems when you start. And to start building up to getting higher value gems, you have these cards that you play to upgrade gems, to trade in it's very two. abstractive. So if you trade in like three yellows, you can upgrade to a blue or something like that. Um, so there's this whole like uh, marketplace of cards that you can pull from. You select one and all the cards move up. That part of the game is so addictive. And a lot of times you just kind of get stuck upgrading cards and buying more cards. It's really easy to teach. There's no words in it. There's really no... There's some math at the end when you're calculating, every, like counting everything up and figuring out the value of your cards. But it's, it's really easy for a lot of people to pick up. And it's just, like I said, super eye-catching, super pretty. It's just been a hit for a lot of people, so I love sharing it. And he gets tired of it, but for me, it's just right. So that's Century Golem Edition. There's Century Spice Road. It is the same game, different theme. The components are a bit different. Boring but... thing. Yeah, but anyway, With so. Boring cubes. <laughs> Let's get the Golem Edition. All right, my number seven is Ponzi Scheme. And this is another game where I'm like, how can this be number seven out of the hundreds of games I've played? <laughs> and I was talking to her about this because I was like torn. I was like, man, people see that Ponzi Scheme is my top 10. <laughs> They're gonna just say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And maybe I don't, okay? I They're all talking about you, Dan. Oh, They're all whoa. talking about you. No one's gonna you watch know? the channel ever again. I don't even know if it's worth going on. The whole 10 people that watch our channel. The whole, yeah. But <laughs> maybe if more. those 10... We know there's a few more than that. Maybe if those 10 people gave us a like, we'd be encouraged to keep going. Ponzi Scheme has this feeling that I don't get in other games, and it's a little bit social deduction, a little bit bluffing. Timing is the word, like social timing. With The game is going to end when someone goes bankrupt, um, and in case the name didn't clue you in, everyone's running Ponzi schemes. So everyone has, everyone starts upon, like you you um, promise an investment so you get a lump sum of cash. But then every so many rounds that you'll have to pay out the investment for that Ponzi scheme. And the real goal is to get these chevrons, which are just equate to points. So you're trading the chevrons for money or, or selling or buying them with other players. And so you don't know when the game's gonna end because all the money's secret. And if a player goes bankrupt, you want to be the person with the most points at that point, which is right. not money, to be clear. And it creates this really weird dichotomy where you're like, oh, that person has a lot of points, which probably means they spent a lot of money to get those points from other players. You don't know. The other tricky part is you only know what you buy and sell from other players because it's all secret. You don't know if that player is buying points from the other person for $50 or $20. <laughs> and so sometimes I see someone that has a lot of 
points or chevrons and I think man they must be close to going bankrupt so I need to spend I need to bid higher so that I get these points from other players because if they go bankrupt I'm not gonna win and then you end up spending all this money to get points and then that person doesn't go bankrupt and you're like crap now I'm gonna go bankrupt I never I almost never win this game either and it's it's easy to think that this game is a like an economic game about managing mm -hmm. your money it's not it really yeah. about that at all it's more of a bluffing game yeah. for short. Pressing your luck. Pressing like your luck, but reading other people. How far can you go to bankrupt without ever yeah. actually going and bankrupt? Yeah, and anyways, I, I just, I get so much joy playing this game because there are a lot of games that are better than it technically, but though those games will be very similar to a bunch of other games, right? So they're, yeah. you know, so this game is special because it's very unique. Uh, it gives me a very unique feeling that I don't get from other games. And that's why it's on my top. Top 10. Yeah. Nice pick. All right, my number seven is actually uh, the only two player. I had to put it on because I just love it. I love the components. I love the elegance of it. I know what it is. Arboretum? No, oh. it's Yinch. Oh, Yinch. I think it was one of the first games I bought um, independently from him thinking maybe he would like it and yeah, he does it's... and I think I like it even more but I was really surprised because it it feels along the lines of like checkers a little bit um, because it is a an abstract board and you have little discs that you're moving along the board similar to checkers but in addition you have rings that are a part of your color and when you move one of your rings all the all the discs that you pass over flip to whatever is the opposite color. So you have this interesting um, uh, mechanism in the game that you can use to your ability adds another layer of strategy and pattern building, basically. That's what I, I think of it more like that because you will pass over a couple and be like, oh, now that these are all white, I can add them to my layer two white. The, what you're trying to do is just get five white discs in a row and you're constantly adding a little disc and then flipping the colors of the other discs that you're moving past. So it has yeah. a very elegant feel. It's very tactile and satisfying to play. I shared this with my dad. He seemed to really enjoy it. It's just a very timeless game. So And it's not at all like this. checkers. Yeah, it's way I don't know more... why. It's not like checkers. Oh, because it has the same pieces. Like when you look at Yinch and Checkers, they're almost they're the same white the same. pieces, black pieces. Well anyways, I kinda take your point. I played this game with a timed round, like with a chess clock on my phone. Really? It's so much better that way. I like this game <laughs> the like the way it's in the box, out of the box. I like the game. I like the game a lot. But I play with somebody and we played once and I'm like, we should have a chess clock. So I just downloaded an app for a chess clock, oh. you know, two minutes for each player. Oh my word. It. I was like, oh my word, this is... It's exciting. Oh. <laughs> I can't explain why I'll, it was so much that. better, but it, it made it a lot better. So anyway, Ginch is my number... Are we on seven? Seven. Yeah. All right. Number six. Vast Crystal... I'm not even going to draw that. Vast Crystal Caverns. It's a asymmetric game. It's one person's a dragon trying to escape from the cavern. One person's a knight trying to kill the dragon. I can't believe this is One so person's high. a goblin trying to kill the knight. Ten. And the cave is trying to expend all the cave tiles and then collapse on everyone. So everyone has different objectives, and there's also a thief who's trying to break a curse by mm -hmm. stealing treasure. Um, and then they added a bunch of other things. Trolls. It's a difficult yeah. game to teach. I've only taught it to people who are seasoned gamers, and so it never Am felt... I seasoned gamer? Okay, no, I take that back. <laughs> when I taught you that game, you are not a seasoned gamer, and uh, you're the one exception to the rule rather difficult to teach. It's a lot to learn. Um, the it, It's it's along the lines of Root, and that's more of a popular game that came out by the same designer yeah. recently. And it's like everyone has their own goals, their own rules. I said that. Completely different. Well, you said, a strat you said asymmetrical, assuming yeah. everyone knows what that means. All right, fair enough. So fair enough. it like each, each person has a completely different game that they're playing for yeah. the other people. So it's not like the one person's going to Unless you're Daniel and you know all the parts, you can't just ask the guy next to you, like, what do I do here? Because they have no idea. Right. So you really do need, like you said, 
well-seasoned gamers. Yeah, it, it just goes smoother that way. I played Root. It is fun though. I, I would play that again. Yeah, I played sure. Root, which is not an official, um, like, it's a totally different game than this. And I enjoy Root, but I think I still like Vast more. I mean, Root's more, hmm. I guess, of a strategic, tactical game, and Vast is kind of more fun game. But I don't know, I, I just like hmm. it more. And um, It is more wacky whimsical. Like, it is more, more whimsical. When, it, when it's set up, and if people haven't seen it before, they are drawn to the table. Not because the everything's just spectacularly awesome, but just because it looks like a fun game and it looks different. Um, if you get a chance to play it and you haven't played it before, check it out. Uh, and I think that once you play it once, you'll want to play it at least a few more times to try the other roles. Because when you're playing, you're like, man, why can that player do that? And I can't do anything like that. But everyone kind of feels that way. Mm -hmm. So it's it was a well-made game. All right, well, my number six is Ponzi Scheme. And I'm so glad that he put it. I was shocked. I'm surprised that you put it on I was shocked list. I put it on my list. I don't know why. <laughs> but I'm thrilled because he already explained the, the theme of it. The reason that I like it is that, like, like you, he said, when you first are presented with it, it feels like an economy game because you are, um, you know, investing in stocks and you have to pay it out and you have a lotted amount of money. And it feels like you should be working this out in yeah. your head or on a calculator. But you can't, because the game is set up so that you fail. The game is about going bankrupt. You will all go bankrupt at one point or another because you're all taking, you're all investing in uh, loans that you cannot pay off. And the game is pushing the luck that you have for going as close to getting bankrupt without being the first one to do it. I think part of why I like it is because it surprised me how much I enjoyed it. So that's why I can kind of, I can't really get off of it. I really enjoy this game. My number five is Photosynthesis, which is a, a game about growing trees. And I guess we are, when you play it, you are a tree species. I don't know that, I don't know who you, the players are supposed to be, but it's a fun game. You're putting trees yeah. out on a board and then collecting sunlight from those trees to then plant more you seeds. Mean like it's been described often as an abstract game mixed with a more of a Euro engine building game, but um, it's mm. the theme is very clear and the like the mechanics and the theme marry each other very well. You're putting trees out on a board and the trees will cast shadow on other trees around it, whether they're yours or not, because the sun will go around the edge of the board and that's how you know where the shadow's gonna be cast. So you're collecting sunlight from these trees, which you will collect on a separate board so that you can plant seeds in the forest and raise up trees. At the end of a tree's life cycle, you can take mm. them off the board and collect points based on how close to the center they were, based on the, the value of the soil. I really enjoy this game because I love the visual appeal to it. The, the pieces yes. are nice, it looks very great, but also I like how the the, the visualness of the game matches the, the mechanisms of the game. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and figuring out you know where other people are gonna go and you're trying to uh, be stay a step ahead of them or yeah. you know maybe sacrifice one or two turns so that you can have a very uh, a bountiful turn at another time it's just a well put together game mm -hmm. and i really enjoy it yeah it's a good pick so my number what are we on number five number five already okay my number five is mysterium and <laughs> i know some people would disapprove because it's considered a party game but I really feel like it's more of an event than a party game. I feel like it kind of is the party. <laughs> anyway, Mysterium is um, a game where there has been someone who died and they were supposedly murdered and they're haunting a mansion and all the players come to the mansion as a part of a seance. The ghost has the job of trying to get the other players to guess who killed them, with what weapon, and in what room. And so they will be revealing, they will be showing them uh, cards that are very dreamlike, kind of surreal, artsy pictures. And um, 
in that in that card you might pick out oh well in this weird picture there's like a polka dotted ball for some reason and maybe someone's wearing a polka dotted hat who's the murderer so you would give the person um that's trying that needs to guess the murderer with the polka dotted hat that card so it's that sort of thing uh it's very objective it's very like very much like a party game where you're trying to read the person and be like how am i going to get them to guess that clue so I really enjoy those types of games and I think the the drama of the game is what really what I'm a real sucker for. So anyway, it's It's very impressive when you pull this out, especially yeah. when people that don't play a lot of games um, are at the table and you pull this out. The, it's packaged very well. The artwork's fantastic. There's they a mansion that they, they're looking at, that's what the screen is. Yeah, I really don't see how they could have done a better job with the way they produced it. It's very well done. I just I just think that little bit is funky at the end where everyone's working together in this right. game. So you can mm -hmm. help other players guess what their clue, other players can ask like, what do you think this might mean? Uh, except for the ghost, obviously you can't talk. But mm -hmm. um, there's this element where if you think, oh, I think that person guessed correctly on that clue. I'm going to put this chip there saying, I think they did. Yeah. And then whoever has the most, like was little the most correct at points. the end for that, they get more clues for the final mystery. Um, it just feels a little clunky, especially because this is a game we play with people who tend not to play a lot of games. So simpler is better. And also, as a gamer, I'm like, I, when I try to explain this rule, I can never explain why this is in there. I feel like when I'm trying to tell someone, well, you, if you're more successful, you get to see more at the end. Sometimes okay. I ignore it altogether. Okay, because this was like, awkward. I feel like it's something you can edit out. Like we don't normally play a strict way. So there are parts to it that are a little, well, awkward. It's not the most um, But it is tight, easy enough yeah, to Yeah, it's ignore. not the most tidy game, right. but it is something special. It's one of those unique games that, I don't know, it, it it is more like an event. It's not just like a typical party game that's all laughs and giggles. It is a game you kind of want to engage in and make it about the game, but it's not a strategic game at all. It's so. the best Halloween game there is. It has a great Halloween game. Anyway, yeah, so I just... Really that there is that's ever in the world. Not really, but... It's the best one I've ever played. Alright, so my number four is Blood Rage. She already talked about it. I really enjoy this game. I've said it before, I'll say it again. At first, I almost didn't buy this game because of the artwork cover, which looks like some bad heavy metal band. <laughs> and Blood Rage, it's like, I don't know. It seems like it's gonna be one type of game. Comes on a little heavy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's much thinkier than the name and cover would suggest. Uh, it is area control, and there is monsters, and there is fighting, but it's also a thinking man's game, and yeah. um, or a woman's game. Anyways, uh, yeah. I like how the ages um, really escalate. So the powers for the second age are kind of—they feel like they're twice as good as that powers for the first age. So if you're kind of behind on the first age, when you get the second age cards and you're drafting, you're just like, oh, I can catch up if I get these. Yeah. And it also has this that wonderful feeling when you're drafting cards where you're like, man, I I really want this really good card, but I don't want to hand these other three really good cards to the next drafting. player. It is one of those games That's where usually the game. right yeah. usually there's at least three or four cards that you want to keep for yourself and you can't there's... drafting is the most painful part of that game for me. Yeah, and that part can Takes a little time. Take a it little takes while, a little but the longer. rest of the game goes yeah. pretty quickly. A it's dyslexic a dyslexic well note. There's a lot of reading on the cards. You have to make decisions kind of quickly. True, yeah. Otherwise, you're going to hold up the people trying to draft their cards. It's a little stressful. If you're dyslexic or a slow reader, give people a heads up. Because you need that time to kind of process. And that. they're not all that way. But if, yeah. Like, and everyone, the first time you're playing it, everyone is like, well, they don't know what other cards are available. Right. So, but yeah. it's it's still fun. I enjoy it. And oh, it I, usually I really goes over it very too. well. Also, if you're in the D&D &D and you don't know about, if you're not sure about most board games, this is a great game to pick up because I don't remember what it costs. Maybe it's 50 or maybe 60 bucks, but there are a ton or there are a lot. There's of, a ton. It's a ton. Of very well sculpted minis in this game. So um, I don't remember what the price is, but I remember pricing out per mini and I'm like, oh, these are like a dollar a piece kind of. Yeah. I, I felt that way. There's but. monsters and then there's armies and each army has two different Sculpts. figures. Three actually, because the leader is different. Oh yeah. So and there's nine. It's and pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's worth buying just for the miniatures really. Prices. You have nothing so, to lose. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. All right, my number four is Orleans. 
Orleans is kind of your run-of-the-mill theme where it's like Renaissance, maybe yeah. some in People some part of Europe. Random stuff. Yeah. And you're building a uh, economy or a town, you're trying to grow your little kingdom. Um, it's a bag builder and a point salad, a point salad, a game where there are tons of different ways to accumulate points. And that's the whole point of the game is to get points, whoever has the most points wins. So there's a couple different things to consider when you're looking at, there's your, your player board, which is my favorite part of it, it's where you pull the little um, tokens, the little players, the little different characters out of your bag. And those different characters have abilities that you can place on your board and they allow you to do a certain action on your board. Um, and those actions will allow you to maybe get more citizens, maybe you'll be able to, uh, you know, open up, um, unlock an ability that you can have. There's different uh, tiles that allow you to specifically do special things so you can kind of draft those abilities and add them to your player board kind of or your turn. Yeah when you see the board yeah. it makes a lot more sense. There's also a map where you can kind of explore you can go down different paths either waterways or down roads and you can build houses as you just go and those points. are yeah just to get more points. I really like the mechanisms again it has that tactile satisfaction but it is basically just a crazy point fest. I like this game. Um, I I enjoy this game, mm -hmm. but I I don't like it as much as you. I don't like how the first few games you kind of know what you have to do. Yeah. There's cogs yeah. you can get that make actions easier to accomplish. I love the cogs. Um, if you do not get those early, mm -hmm. you will be at a disadvantage for the entire did game. Did you explain the cogs? You put the cog into the action spot, and briefly. then you will automatically yeah get to do that. I like it. All the ends. I actually like the way it looks too. Some yeah, people say they don't like, like the artwork. I like I, the artwork. I like it. It's kind of like primitive. It looks like early Bible stories. It looks pictures. like yeah. It reminds me of what the early yeah. Middle Ages artwork looked like. All right, my number three is a game that um, I think will be another crossover. Is Viticulture. Mm. This is a another work replacement game. It looks very nice. It's by Stonemaier Games. Um, they have, it's an engine building game and you are um, uh, building up your vineyards so you can produce grapes to make wine to fill orders. <laughs> and the worker placement in this game is very well thought out. I like how they have a Papa worker who can't be blocked from certain spots. I love Papa. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it's a very uh, uh, pleasing game to look at on the table. Mm -hmm. It has a very nice theme that uh, is easy for lots of different people to get into yeah. and um, yeah. uh, I don't know, I, I, if you've played a work replacement game, it's not that it does anything super special, it's just that it does everything very well. I particularly yeah. like the part in the beginning where you're bidding to see who can go, who wants to go first I like that too, in the turn order, phase, yeah. yeah, the spring phase or whatever. Um, and that's a very nice, that's a part I also very much enjoy about that game would. And when that's not in other worker placement games, um, I kind of wish like, oh, I wish there was a way that you could be rewarded for not going first. Because in a lot yeah. of worker placement games, it's just like, oh, you're not first? Well then, tough luck. You know, you yeah. you have to, it's the worst picking. So, <laughs> I, I like that part of it a lot. Yeah, I agree. I agree so much that Viticulture is my number three as well. Hey, hey, hey crossover. Sweet, yeah. So, like he said, I love Viticulture as well. The theme is lovely. It has a very nice, not only does it have the theme of running a vineyard, but you have certain actions that you do in the spring and certain actions that you do in the fall. And it all relates to the, the work of growing vineyards and pressing wine. Um, so just, it's all very nicely thought out theme wise and like you said i really like the the like um first person action as well where you if you don't go first there's some sort of benefit that you can get so it kind of gives you more like that can fall into your strategy a little bit like mm -hmm. sure i'm going last i'm not going to have the opportunity to maybe pick my favorite spot but i have an extra worker 
Yeah. I don't know. It's nice. That's really nice. The one thing about this game that is a little mm -hmm. bit of a drawback, I find, um, is the visitor cards. There's cards you can pick up that give you a special <laughs> bonus. And sometimes those yeah, feel much like some of those seem just like a slight bump and some of them seem very good. <laughs> and what you get is just luck of the draw. Yeah, there so. it really depends on how many people are playing because some cards are dependent on like, well, each player has to either pay a little bit of money or give you points. Like it's that sort of thing. So if you were playing a five player game, that can bump one person up really quickly. Yeah. But and if you're playing three or And you're only playing players, to like, 20 points or 25 points. Yeah. So if you get five points in a turn, that's a huge chunk of what you need to get. I was going to say I really enjoy the cards because there's a nice variety. So if you invest some of your turn, your, your worker, like placing your workers to get those visitor cards, it does pay off as opposed to just trying to ignore them because they really do kind of change the game to yeah. a degree or another. So it depends how you play. Right. But um, yeah, Vidi Culture. Obviously it's a winner in the Monado house because we both like it at number three. My number two is a game that I played recently <laughs> it's a game. and it makes me happy just thinking about it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's Far Cry. This game makes my brain hurt when I play it and it hurts so good. Um, That's I, so not cool. Don't say that. <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> right, I think the reason why I like this game so much is because it is a heavy economic game. You have that influence of hiring workers, which will make workers more expensive for all the players, but you might sell more goods to the to the public because there's more people working. Um, what makes this game really fun for me is that you're, as much as there's a lot of rules in the game, you're ultimately playing against the other players. And I know that might sound obvious in a multiplayer game, but a lot of games you're actually more playing- The game. You're, the game. Yeah. And, they, and it's almost a solo-ish game. And this isn't that way, you know, if you- It's really competitive. It's, yeah, it's very much cutthroat where you might, I would start a factory and I'm like, okay, I, I'm gonna have to pay $24 in wages and that's fine, I can make a profit. And the next person opens a factory and hires a bunch of workers and then all of a sudden the wages, you have to pay more to keep everyone there. Or sometimes you spend all this money in advertisement to make your goods worth more than someone else's and then they close that factory anyways and then you wasted all that money too much yeah huh? so that's what i like about this game is that <laughs> it's that come how you're playing against your opponents and if you are playing against good opponents or at least opponents that are better than yourself it's very challenging and that's usually what happens to me i'm usually very challenged in this game which i like i like yeah that, that is interesting though because it's more like real life like if you have a business and someone is you know charging less for the same service you're gonna have to charge less it's just the natural way yeah. things are and this game does that and you have like, to deal with that it's interesting so. yeah okay well my number two is a game i hesitated to put on because it's new to us yeah. we just started we just bought it recently We're i know which one this is three times because you love this but game. i love it so much i'm like number where's this two. game been my whole life <laughs> this is manila and it is um just Bonkers fun. It, it's a <laughs> Manila is a racing game. There's these little like pontoon boats that are racing. There's three of them and they're trying to get into a port and you can bet on which boat you think is going to get into the port. In addition to that, you can bet on the boats that aren't going to make it and you can be pirates and jump onto the boats and hijack them if they land on the number 13 and there's dice rolling and there's stocks like that uh, that count as points towards the end of the game so whatever boat is carrying the stock that you have is gonna rise in profit as you as that boat wins the race and comes into port there's all these different elements it's all about waging bets and weighing the risks and the rewards and it all comes down to dice rolls so it's super fun there's a lot of highs and lows i don't i can't remember the last time i got so excited at rolling dice other than playing D. &D. so manila is like a natural fit for me it's just yeah it's the, a fun it's game it's my sort of game um and i particularly yeah. like how the i think this game does a good job of of raising the stakes so you place everyone places a pawn out which is kind of like placing bets then you roll the dice and then, then the bolt yeah. the boats that are carrying the goods will move. move up on the track and then everyone places good uh, bets again 
And so you you get more and more invested as the round goes by, and then you're just like fighting your nose, like, ah, oh, maybe it'll go in the fort, maybe it won't. And it is, it's, I can't believe that this game has been around for as long as it has been. Yeah, it's an old game. It was recently reprinted, which is why we came across it. And I've never heard of it before, and we were at game group, and people at our game group, they have very large collections with, they've been in the hobby a long time, so they awesome. have ordered. Yeah, yeah, they bring these fun games that, I, you know, if you're newer yeah, to the hobby like us, you wouldn't necessarily have heard of it. This is a fantastic yeah. one. Manila, it's three to five players. It only plays about an hour, maybe. And yeah, it could go if, faster If too, you, you know? are have that betting spirit in you like I do, then you will want to play right away again. So it's just such a fun game and it's my number two. Well, my number one's probably not gonna be much of a surprise. It's Spirit Island. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, I like Spirit <laughs> Island. It's a cooperative game, but it's a very heavy, uh, thinky cooperative game. Mm -hmm. So everyone is different spirits on an island, and the island's being invaded by explorers that are settling and yeah. causing blight. So you are trying to uh, scare them all or fight them all, your island to preserve your island. And all the spirits have different powers and stuff that you uh, yeah, powers that you can play, mm -hmm. um, and you you work together. You take your turns sort of together. You can choose what order to play your powers in. So it's very cooperative that way. Mm -hmm. But because it's so complicated, it's it would be very difficult for one person to be like, oh, well, you should really be playing that there and this there yeah. because it's there's so much going on. You kind of have to take care of your spot and ask your players your your. Um, to be responsible for their own. Yeah, yeah, and then like you, yeah. I like how the spirits help each other out. So they like, if you have a certain spirit that gives lots of energy, which is kind of like a currency in this He'll be game. Like, Can I please have some energy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you, some of the spirits are energy starved, <laughs> and so yeah, I like the crunchiness of this game. I like the way that um, it gives you that feeling of people working together yeah. with their own separate type of abilities to overcome one big problem mm -hmm. um, and it keeps my attention I, I, we've played it many times over 70 times now um, I, I think what keeps me coming back to this game is the way the difficulty ramps up um, for the mm -hmm. for the invaders and the, the way you can choose how difficult to make it I think they did an excellent job as that for that because if they would have just had like three different settings I think I'd be done with it by now like I think I would have right. still enjoyed it but I would have just played it enough times to kind of be done with it. I'm really excited for the Kickstarter expansion. The uh, current situation in the world is delaying that delivery for sure, but yeah. hopefully it'll come sooner rather than later. Yeah, those poor people, they have bigger problems to yeah, have bigger deal problems with than our board games. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I like Spirit Island. It's in my top 20, but it's not my yeah. top 10. Uh, do you have any idea? I'm curious if you... What games haven't you said yet? Yeah. Because I picked this one, and I'm like, yeah. I've kind of felt like deep down in my heart all along this was my... Pity culture? I already said pity culture. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. I don't, can't remember which ones you said. Oh, it's, well, it's photosynthesis. What? Really? I love photosynthesis. Well, why don't we play it more often? I don't know. I would like. I let's go play it right now. Um, <laughs> I don't think it plays at two player very well. I like. I like it at two players. Really? We should play it more then. The advanced version at two players, where oh, you can't grow should. trees unless they're in the sunlight. Yes. Now photosynthesis is the tree game that Daniel talked about earlier, where you have trees and you're growing them from acorn up. And light is all of your resources. You always want to have lots of light so that you can plant more trees because it costs a lot of light to get your tree. You have to spend your light to just get your tree available to put onto the board, which a lot of people don't like that rule, but that really makes this game difficult. It really like gives it another level. And there are people that say this game is like one note if the person you know, gets in the center and gets the highest value plot of land um, that you can get, that they're automatically going to win. And that is not the case. There's yeah. so many different ways to win this. You can try by getting all the cheaper 
um, easier to get plots of land. If you get more of those, you might win it. So yeah, so there, there's a lot of, it's kind of a weird economy game, but it's so, yeah. like, and it's strange that it works for me, but it does for some reason. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm just surprised that this is your number one. I yeah. Well, I am such a sucker for the colors in this game. Like, it is just so beautiful. Yeah. The art, there, there's so many pretty little creatures, like, hidden underneath the trees. And so I just am such a sucker for nice artwork. And this game has it in spades. And then I love the theme. And it's also a strategy game that I have come to grow at and get better at. Games like that where I can excel and compete competitively, like, are little treasures to me. So for some reason, photosynthesis works for me. I've learned to get better at it. And I always feel like playing it. When, like we take it to game night, and I don't suggest it. We play it a lot. But I always want to be like, photosynthesis? Anybody? No? People claim that this game is too sane. Yeah. But I think the yeah. problem uh, might be that the main board is, I disagree that it's, a, that it's an abstract game because the theme is very it's so much perfect. Yeah, but anyways, says, the board's yeah. sort of like an abstract board where it's very um, symmetrical. Yeah. So in theory, if you and if you're playing against someone else and you always do the same things, you could do the same things all the time. There's no luck in this game. Mm -hmm. You are free to make you the exact same might choices take in every your game. Same spot. No, I'm just saying, but if you play against another opponent and they always play one way and you always play, play the, the same other. way, it You'd would have the same outcome. You could have exactly the same game, yeah. right? But that's like any of these abstract games where there's no luck involved. There's mm -hmm. no luck involved, of course you can have the same. Right. It's up to the players to try different strategies, just like any zero luck game. I've played it lots and I've seen people win playing lots of different ways. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it's that same. Anyway, I love photosynthesis. It's just such a nice game. Yeah. I know that's such a bad <laughs> review of it, but it just is. I'm just like, I play that anytime. Woo! We're done! <laughs> We're done. That was our top 10. Now, if you stuck around to the end of the video, we'll, um, we'll tell you what, what didn't quite make the list. Time to get Arboretum on the list. Arboretum, oh, I, almost, I have that here. I have this here. I really enjoy that game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great little you know, game. If I would have made this list three years ago, baseball highlights would have been on the list. Yeah. Concordia is a very solid game that deserves to be in the top ten, but yeah, didn't it's a make good it. Game. Just didn't make it. We just don't play it enough. I only played it once. I was like, you know what? I'm not putting it on. I only played it once. I don't have any other games here that I, I played, only played oh, once. I played it once. Play you times, you played like, it more than we played I a lot have. of games. Yeah. A flatline is a yep. fun game. So yeah. fun. That's a great. List. Yeah. I had uh, Firefly. I had Citrus, Dutch Blitz, uh, Cytosis. I love Cytosis. It's really simple. It's more like a kids game, but it's well, such a good worker place. I wouldn't call it a kids game. Well, it's not a kids game, maybe not. But it's it's a cell it's a bi uh, biology cell Bandwidth, building game. Yeah. I just. Love that game. I, yeah. I, I almost took Blood Rage off to put Cytosis on. I'm like, can I? Blood Rage is pretty epic. Yeah. It seemed a little pale in comparison to Blood Rage, but I love Cytosis. Um, Arboretum, I have on here. Dutch Blitz, Sangrata, Welcome to Spirit Island. You know what newer game I almost put on was Point Salad. Yeah. I <laughs> Like, it's such a simple a game. game. It's not doing anything that it's spectacular, so, it's but so great. Burp, it just kind of has. Roman it just does the right. Uh, I'm tired. That game. I'm, You're sick of that. I've I played like it so many poker. times. Um, and one other one I was thinking I should. Oh, Abyss. But I only played it once. I'm like, I can't. I feel like Abyss could replace a couple games for me, but I only played it once, so I didn't want to be too quick, too hasty. Don't be hasty. Yeah. I like Abyss. Do you? I don't know, I feel like I'm not sure what it is yet. It reminds it. me of a cross between Star Realms and Sentry. And I love those games. And it's super pretty. Well, anyways, thanks for watching. That was our top tens plus. If you enjoyed it, then then uh, then glad. I'm glad. Because that's <laughs> We're the only reason why we make these. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please remember to give it a like and a thumbs up. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.